happy to start this and um sure okay so um what i what i'd like to do is um to go through essentially the four questions that are also posted um so mm -hmm. what's what happened in the last couple mm -hmm. of weeks um what are the current um, plans for the next steps um then I'm curious about your personal motivation. Um, I'm also happy to share mine. Um, so, um, and then we could make a, uh, also think a little bit about a collective motivation, but maybe that's mm -hmm. also something for later. And, mm -hmm. um, and also um, like wrapping it up with the, the question of, are we on the right track um, with what we're doing towards that's motivation. So yeah, yeah. Let's let's begin on the top. So so um, what happened? Right. So I think uh, the main thing that occurred is uh, we had one meeting, uh, uh, and the the objective of that meeting was, I think, to to now start thinking about the conference that. Uh, we had proposed the last time, mm -hmm. um, but in that meeting, I think there was still like a, a lack of alignment uh, among the core team members uh, in terms of what 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 is it that, what is it that we're trying to do? Like, what are we trying to obtain from that conference? Mm -hmm. uh, so I feel like that threw us into uh, um, an existential crisis, if you will. Uh, and you know we started going back uh, to wondering like what you know what are we what is it that motherland is about like what are we um and of course there were more practical questions like uh do we do we know each other well enough to uh you know start working together on something of course that does that does not answer the question of what is it that we are working on in the first place mm -hmm. um and then uh, do we have shared values do we have a unified identity um and and i feel like those are all important questions uh but it left us with not a lot of uh direction to be honest i felt like um we we um we, we became even more lost but on the other hand we i think we all agreed that we needed to contribute like all of us needed to uh be more active in the communication channels that uh, we um we have uh, uh, like we that we exist in email, uh, WhatsApp. Uh, I proposed that we also have a LinkedIn group so that uh, you know, not everyone is on WhatsApp, not everyone is active on email, but a good number of people uh, have LinkedIn, and it's like a place where uh, you can, when you join, you can see what has happened from the beginning in terms of what people are posting and and so on and so forth. So I went ahead and created that group and shared it. Um, Mm -hmm. I also generated like a, an email list, it's just a spreadsheet. Uh, I'm sure you have like a more comprehensive list, but I based on other people who, who I remember had attended the meeting. And mm -hmm. some people are like Haman are more comfortable with uh, email. So uh, he sent out a, a thread indeed. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other thing is uh, we had intended to recruit more members. Um, from uh, I, So I don't know about a about luther but i know anesu and tawanda have done well to invite uh more farmers from zimbabwe mm -hmm. into the whatsapp group mm -hmm. uh, on my side i've been engaging with uh two people in kenya mm -hmm. uh, uh you know beverly who had tried to join a call uh and uh, as well as my sister actually because who's a an agronomist mm -hmm. who has a big access to you know farmers in western oh. kenya Cool. Um, where, where is she? Well, she's based in Eldoret, uh, our hometown, and she supports farmers. I've actually invited her to the calls, but I think she, she, like many others, didn't really know what this was about. Uh, despite my trying to explain that it's mm -hmm. nobody knows exactly, we're trying to figure it out as a as a group. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. So I would say those are the things that have happened. So in summary, the one meeting where. Uh, a lot of uncertainty was raised, but also people agreed that it made sense to be more active in terms of communication, mm -hmm. uh, as well as uh, recruiting members. Okay. Yeah. 
All right. And um, <clears throat> apart from apart from those commitments, um, are there any, were there any concrete next steps that were that came out of that? Identified. Yeah. So we had started thinking about potential logistics of a conference. Mm -hmm. uh, so like uh, when you know thinking about dates, thinking about the number of people to be in, to, to invite, mm -hmm. thinking about how the communication would occur. Mm -hmm. given the times that we're in and given the conditions of uh, uh, most uh, attendees who may not like have a uh, good internet because mm -hmm. uh, I, I imagine like this is be an online conference yeah uh, awesome. so we did touch a bit on some ideas of how to bring that about but then i think the lingering question was more like uh, that that dominated everything was what are we trying to get out of that uh, uh, conference so we didn't go uh we, we took a step back and so in terms of the action plans and the action steps, uh, it, it kind of got derailed, I feel like. And maybe rightly so. Um, maybe we need to identify, to be clear about like what, what it is that we're trying to achieve mm -hmm. uh, or, or obtain out of that conference. Um, and then that influences how we plan it in terms of who to invite and what are the modalities of of of, of uh, running that conference but on the other hand i think it's also perfectly okay not to have a specific agenda it's about brainstorming mm -hmm. uh but then maybe it's harder for like a larger group to to get motivated to to, to attend so maybe it's a valid concern after yeah yeah well i i guess you know at one point i think we went uh, so far we went through a, a really really interesting process and we we um i think we found some interesting things um but it's um and i think that's why the motivation question is so important um it's unclear what we will now use this for right so we could we could uh, we could say we, we do um we publish this and then we have something that we published and, mm -hmm. and that's it. We could say we do a conference. We could say we, we create a product and open source that product. We could say we um, find somebody who wants to, to start a company around this and, and run this or a, a nonprofit. We could say so many different things um, mm -hmm. and that is, um, which are directly connected to our motivation of why we do this. I think mm -hmm. this is why I, I believe at this point um, it is very important to ask that question of why we're we actually here, right? Um, not everybody can hold that space that you were describing earlier with your uh, sister of uncertainty, right? It's not knowing, mm -hmm. let's figure it out as a group. I have the feeling that at the moment we need to figure this out as a group mm -hmm. um, in order to use the the valuable stuff we found and created um, and, and and move that forward and find the direction for that yeah so so um, to open that as a, as the third question about our individual motivations i can i can share my um sure. motivation i know uh -huh. sebastian's is very similar and then um, i'd love to hear from you about yeah. uh, about yours um so uh, um, I, I, I draw a very big circle now, okay so I get on 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 uh, yeah, very meta. So the way we've been organizing ourselves as humanity um, in the last couple of hundred years is um, entirely broken. It's it served well to do several things. So we managed to create some amazing science and technology. And on, on the back of that, um, managed to create enormous wealth and a lot of well-being for many, many people. Um, but at the same time, we managed to destruct and destroy a lot of other things that um, are now missing. And that system that we use to create all of that is not fit to save the situation. It's not fit to say that um, 
uh, we can we can actually maintain and reinstate balance of the planet and live as humanity in balance with the planet. Mm -hmm. um, that is to say that if we want to continue as a species, um, then we need to reconfigure essentially everything we do. The way we make decisions in terms of governance, the way we exchange goods and services, the way we think about an actual knowledge and all of these things, right? And this, this is what drives me at the core. And this is also what is um, then ob obviously connected um, with, with what we do here at um, and with Motherland. And I see five potential directions the future can take. And there's one in there that I think has the strongest potential um, for creating a good outcome. So one is extinction, right? Possible scenario for this century. One is what I call um, Mad Max low tech. You know, if you've seen a movie, if Mad Max, have you have ever seen a movie Mad Max? No, I don't think. I, maybe I've seen like a promo material, oh. but so it's it's yeah. like the, the, these iconic images of people uh. with um, with cars uh, that they've put together from scrap. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, in 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 desert-like situations, um, mm -hmm. they're fighting with each other, and mm -hmm. uh, so it's a, it's, a, it's a dystopian version of the future um, mm -hmm. without much technology. So people are are sitting on the rest of the technology we have right now, and and, mm -hmm. and trying to 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 compete around that. That's Mad Max low tech, and there's Mad Max high tech, which is um, more like the Matrix run by people, but only mm -hmm. a few people, right? Um, so, so um, people are using technology to enslave other people and try and in, instill the notion of a good life in them, but that's mm. it, right. Um, mm. Then there's Star Trek mm. high tech, which is like the Star Trek um, series. Yeah. Um, we've used technology in the most wise ways we could ever imagine, mm. and science and Everybody's on, a, on an enormous level um, and um, technology transcends everything, um, but in a good way. Um, and there's um, Star Trek low, low tech, which is um, more like, um, which I see more as a, as a approach where communities um, close to the Dunbar number, so half 150 people plus minus uh, a bit, mm -hmm. um, become self-reliant, self-sufficient, self-sustaining uh, while being connected with all other um, communities around the globe, mm -hmm. using technology, also using high tech, but not relying on it. Mm -hmm. So. So in case high tech breaks down for some reason, um, this, the global society doesn't break down. Mm. Yeah? Mm. And that, is, that is the kind of future I think we should be lo looking for. And, um, and I, I um, to, make this, to make this more concrete now in the, in the, in the motherland image, uh, since we settled on agriculture, I believe that um, I think it's so super ridiculous that especially farmers um, are poor and hungry. Um, there's, a, there's a strong, um, Elizabeth pointed to that, and um, I, I know that there's um, an enormous amount of uh, farmers committing suicide. Um, <laughs> Uh, since the beginning of the century, uh, I think 25,000 farmers in India committed suicide because of wow. debt, debt cycle with Monsanto. It's, it's disgusting. And uh, so, so what if, what if you um, think about it in, in a different term? What if you think about it like the, the Thai king introduced in the, in the 90s? 
sufficiency economy, which means that um, you, around the farm, you, you look to feed the people on the farm and around the farm, your community. And that's your primary concern. Um, your primary concern is not to export or, or, or make money or whatever, but your primary concern is to care for your community. And um, if enough farmers start doing that, then there's absolutely no worry, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. um, you might not have SUVs, but you, everybody can have a good, good life. Mm -hmm. so that's, that's the kind of direction I'm, I'm, I'm uh, thinking about. And I think that technology can help facilitate that move. And that's um, where the technology part comes in. So that's my personal motivation. Um, right. To learn um, how to do that and to learn how such a process works. Because what we, um, what we explore with, with what we do as a group with Motherland can be done by other groups um, in other continents, in other domains. Um, and what if we find, um, as, a, as a second product, <laughs> Um, if we find a process that we can then open source and give to the give to the people to do that yeah. themselves in everywhere and solving all other sorts of problems, right? That would be amazing. So that's my that's my total motivation for doing this. Mm. I see. Interesting. Uh, maybe before I go uh, into mine, can I ask then uh, what for you is a product right now, if at all, if there's any. Uh, so a product is anything that that um, so in its most abstract sense, it's it's yeah. it's it's some some substrate that is being created by a group of people to solve some problem. Mm -hmm. it, there's no need for making money in this. There's no need for being physical. There's no need for being digital. There's no need for you know it. It can be in this, in its simplest form. It's a meme. Um, it's just. It's a one. A meme, just an idea that okay. uh, that that people that that we create that's new that people can use to better their life. That's the mm -hmm. that that could be in its most abstract mm -hmm. form and most minimal form. That could be a, the product, right? But it could also be a piece of hardware that somebody starts selling, and we form a company around that. I don't know. So so I'm mm -hmm. I'm totally open with, with, about the product. Mm -hmm. Definition. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, that's uh, that's a lot, and I feel like uh, what I'm gonna say is kind of watering down the, the <laughs> conversation from the better level in which you are. Don't worry. <laughs> um, but as you were speaking, my mind was racing. I mean, because uh, you know, you've clearly had uh, a lot to think about. The, you know the world and and it's the problems uh, that our uh, life comes with or our existence on here um for me i think if the question is what motivates me it's really applying tools that we have at the moment or tools that we can create to solve uh, uh existing problems and and you know to to, to, to make the world a, a fairer place to live in, to, to make it a, a place where we want to be, you know, where we want to live in, if that makes sense. And I know that's the most generic thing you've heard, uh, probably, but it's, it's kind of something that drives everything that I, 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 I do. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, all the entrepreneurial projects that I've involved myself in, uh, Typically, it's important to me uh, for me to know, like, what is it? Is it is it is it going to make lives easier? Is it going to make lives richer and more meaningful? Uh, and and if we can do that without uh, harming uh, our our habitat, our planet, uh, even better. So I think fundamentally it comes down to that, uh, and I would say it's it's. It gives me the flexibility to be interested in so many different things. Um, you know, right now, my mind space has been in you know mobility and and uh, logistics or transportation as a whole, uh, because I see a lot of the 
uh, opportunity for, for people and, and goods to connect. Uh, but it also has serious implications on, uh, on, on the planet, on the material, uh, on our material existence, right? You know, everyone is worrying about, uh, what most people are worrying about, like climate change and, and, uh, and, 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 and pollution and rightly so. And, and I feel like I, uh, I worry about those things uh, as well. But I'm also interested in, you know, food, in water, mm -hmm. uh, and, 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 um, and, and social justice, you know. Uh, the world is now grappling with uh, serious structural issues, you know, of racism uh, that, that, that didn't start yesterday. It started uh, many centuries ago. And uh, I think you alluded to it also, how we've built uh, a prosperous, wildly prosperous world, but for, you know, for some people, not everyone. And for me, uh, the drive is, 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 is always about how can we make lives uh, not just tolerable, but, but actually worth living mm -hmm. for everyone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So in terms of what that means for, for motherland, I do not know right now. Uh, I, you know, I rely on our putting our minds together mm -hmm. to uh, develop something concrete um, that can be realized. Mm -hmm. uh, and <clears throat> even if it's a process, uh, you know, process or, or, or approach to problem solving is, is what I was thinking when, when, you, when you mentioned product, mm -hmm. right? It may not be like an actual company, but, but a way of thinking. Yeah. Um, and so I, that's why you know, I do not mind giving my time uh, and to, to developing such a, um, like a useful tool, a company, uh, an actual product, you know? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's, I mean, you, I, what I hear is mirroring a lot of what I, uh, what I said, um, as well in, in, in your motivation, you're using other words, but I think it's very, very similar. Um, and um, also the, the reason why I, why I was cautious in, in talking about the wealth, <laughs> because I don't believe that the people actually are wealthy. Um, so, you know, if you think about um, um, be, people being poor, then we usually think about them being poor on the lower end of Maslow's hierarchy of need. <laughs> On the on the most fundamental things you need in life, on your physical needs, mm -hmm. um, but there's there's poverty on on all five layers, right? Mm -hmm. And we have immense poverty um, on on well-being and and connection in the so-called wealthy nations, right? Mm -hmm. Enormous problems there. Um, so I think there is some trading going on between that kind of wealth and that kind of wealth, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't believe in this notion of wealthy. What I, what, I, what I believe in is that we have to build a world in which everybody's equally wealthy on all five levels of, of Maslow's hierarchy of needs, right? Um, and um, so I hear that in what you're saying. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. And 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 regarding the the product, um, I think as I, as I said, there's there's two products that that we're creating, um, and one relies on the other. So the one product is the meta process of um, of coming together in this form and creating a product that is actually tangibly changing something on the in people's lives. Um, um, and and the other one is the yeah, you know, that's the suit. It's, it's, it's a concrete product and the, and the process. And these are the two products. But if, if, we, if we don't succeed in creating the concrete product, we don't succeed in the process, right? So only if we manage to actually improve people's lives with that. Um, and, you know, the, the concrete way I would, I, would, I would phrase that is that, I would, that my expectation would be that we find and define something, something, right? It can, that's still a very fluid thing. But that makes a couple of millions people's lives better in the next two or three years. Mm -hmm. That's what I would love to see. 
And I think that's totally possible. And um, then um, so if we manage to do that and we, we keep track of how we did it, then we can also, as a second product, explain the how to other people. Mm -hmm. right? And this is also why I love, I'd love to start recording all of our conversations, mm -hmm. document that um, in case somebody wants to go back there later and understand the process. Mm -hmm. Like this conversation. So that, so because, because I think um, there, there, there will be phases that every group will go through. And, um, and, and uh, this is just one of the phases that we're, we're experiencing mm. right now. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, yeah, so uh, it's actually fascinating uh, when you mentioned uh, how poverty exists on all the five levels of uh, Maslow's, is it called hierarchy of needs? Yeah, I think it's called hierarchy of needs, but or Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. I was just thinking, perhaps maybe a better word to replace wealth is well-being, yeah. and uh, because it does apply to all, you know, fundamental levels of existence to you know, psycho, psychological, social needs, um, and and just for the you know ease of communication, I would say maybe that's uh, the overarching. Uh, uh, value or, or desire that we want to see uh, in, on, on this and this place that we live in. Now back to uh, motherland. Mm -hmm. uh, I think, and I see what you're saying with the product and process as a, rather a concrete product being the result of a of a of a repeatable, scalable process. Mm -hmm. That can be applied to you know different settings, different geographies, different industries or sectors of, mm -hmm. of you know economies, and you know I, I really do see that. Uh, I guess now the question is, uh, they, you know, they come, they both go on, and not 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 one comes after the other. They are it's like a cycle. So mm -hmm. where do we where do we go from here? What's uh, what's what's next? How do we how do we arrive at a concrete product? Mm -hmm. uh, while keeping being alive to the process and 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 yeah, keeping uh, being fully aware of the process. So what? So what? So what are your thoughts on this? What What would you do? Yeah. That's what are your? Uh, um. Yeah. Perhaps. I mean, it's maybe. I think the 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 the, the four question the 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 question that is at the four of all, all our minds is like, what is the end game, mm -hmm. right? Um, how do we put our energies uh, into something that uh, can become real mm -hmm. and that you know we can look back and, and, and you know feel satisfied that uh, and be happy that we participated in creating bringing about either this product or, or process and um, I guess nobody knows but I mean we have some ideas mm -hmm. um, I think the general consensus is that it's there's a lot of value in talking to more people, mm -hmm. uh, and and uh, especially people who are closer to this problem area that we've defined, which is uh, agriculture. Yeah. Um, and uh, I think there's a bigger chance that we will arrive at uh, different uh, maybe conclusions or arriving at different concrete products uh, when we speak to even more people. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes I, I feel like there's definitely you know people who are more qualified than me uh, to to comment and to make these contributions that we do on this on this uh, community, and and that we should find those people, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, maybe they'll have a different way of thinking. Maybe they'll drive us to the status quo, <laughs> uh, but that's okay. I think the value this value in gathering as much information as possible while moving quickly as well. Because because time is is limited. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I would I would um, phrase it uh, very similarly. Um, so, I think we have a one 
um, value that we've created, I think, is that we drilled it down to the last step in the post harvest value chain. And say, okay, that's where we can have the most, that's our leverage point. And, um, and but that's also um, potentially a little more difficult to find people specifically in that field because it's not also not so trivial to describe what, what that actually is. Um, but um, it is better than talking about agriculture in general, right? So, um, yeah. um, and so what I see, what, what, what we should do is uh, um, have an exercise in defining exactly what that leverage point is. I think we haven't, we might not have done that properly enough. And, um, and then find or existing organizations and people exactly at that point and have that conversation with them that we could format as a conference, that we could format in, in, in other ways um, that, um, and as you say, move quickly with that. So I think, I think useful next steps could be having more conversations like, um, like ours, which is what we're doing right now. Um, and uh, as I said, I'd, I'd like to have these conversations with um, everybody in the core group, but also with the, with the group together um, to really get, get a consensus about, um, about what and why we're doing this. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I think that's, that's step number one. And then um, step number two is really going one step back, clarifying exactly what we mean by last step in the post-harvest value chain and then focus on finding those people and, and getting the feedback. Mm -hmm. And out of the feedback, um, I'm, I'm sure, but obviously um, uh, there's no guarantee that there will be one concrete main issue emerging. That's, um, and that main issue, solving that main issue in some form, that will be our concrete output. That is as concrete as yeah. I can get. So you mentioned earlier that um, the process at which we arrived at um, identifying one specific subset of the post-harvest post -harvest value chain may have been incorrect or incomplete. Uh, do you mean, do you suggest, are you suggesting that it's possible that we look at even pre-harvest pre uh, activities. I, I, actually, I, I trust that point very much. So I think uh -huh. we did everything right in the in the in the in, in identifying the the that it's the last step in the post harvest value chain. Yeah. I'm pretty sure about that. But um, I I when I say when when I say the last step in the post harvest value chain. I'm not even 100% sure what I mean. Right? And I think that's the step we skipped, defining exactly what we as a group mean when we say that. Because it could be an aggregator, it could be um, the, the distributor, it could be um, a minute, like a little shop, it could be the the distributor in the community, but it could also be the, the aggregator for international corporations. Maybe we don't even want that kind of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. so, so, um, so what is it? I think we skipped that step, and I think that's, that's um, what we're all a little bit confused about. Um, so so cl clarifying our motivation as a group, and also, um, which I think is necessary but um not difficult because um none of us here is motivated by money so um so i think not in this project at least so so we're we're here because of a, a some higher purpose and um, and i think that's a strong connection already um and um, our conversation is very similar to the conversation i have with elizabeth um and so 
and I expect the other conversations to also be very similar. Um, but I think there's, there's, a, there's an unclarity about um, what we actually mean when we say last step in the post harvest biology. Okay. Yeah, so, so in that sense, I, what, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Go. The reason I ask is, uh, is because in the last couple of uh, uh, you know, meetings and, and, and seeing the contributions. Um, we've had a lot more, you know, farmers and, and people who, hello? I'm here, I'm here. I'm just, Thomas? Yeah, I am here. I think I lost you. I'm here. I can hear you. Oh. Tip two? 